Hi Spring fans, welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. This time, we're looking at my Betis. And now I know, we did look at this way back in 2017, and we're not gonna intentionally retread that same path. What we wanna do this time is to look at the Spring native support for my Betis and Spring Boot. Over the holidays, I decided I wanted to start hacking on the Spring and my Betis integration, uh, seeing if I could find some way to provide a nice integration for Spring native and Growl VM. Anybody who has watched the show before surely knows that uh, Growl VM is a drop-in replacement for the Hotspot Just-in-Time compiler. Uh, it is a uh, just-in-time compiler that takes your code that frequently executes and turns it into native architecture uh, specific and you know, operating system specific binaries. Those binaries are much smaller in footprint and in uh, startup time than your typical JRE application. But to achieve these results, it has to forsake some of the many dynamic behaviors uh, that we take for granted on the Java platform. Things like reflection, proxies, uh, you know, uh, serialization, I mean, JNI access, all this kind of stuff that you just kind of take for granted no longer works in the context of a GraalVM native images uh, it, without at least some configuration. And that's where Spring Native comes in. That Spring Native provides configuration that makes it so that if you're just creating objects that do none of these dynamic things, uh, it'll just work out of the box because all the dynamic behavior will be in Spring and Spring Native makes Spring work in that context. The trouble lies when you have libraries or integrations that you use that themselves also have dynamic behavior, things like reflection, like creating proxies, like serialization, like JNI, etc. Somebody needs to write extra programmatic hints to discover those dynamic integrations and tell the GraalVM compiler about that. This is one of the wheelhouses for Spring Native. Now, Spring Native, bear in mind, is a, a, a project that we created a few years ago. Uh, it has uh, proved to be a very useful way to get Spring Boot 2x and Spring Framework 5x generation applications uh, to work with GraalVM uh, native images. I put together a prototype that was far from complete, uh, and the MyBetis team took notice, and they eventually started expanding upon it uh, and taking it further. Eventually, fellow Spring team member Stefan Nicol was nice enough to lend his time to help take the example even further, to take the integration even further, and eventually we had something that actually did what we were hoping to do. Right? Well, you can take your Spring Boot MyBetis applications unchanged except for the build and get them to work in a GraalVM native image context. That's awesome. That is such good news. Uh, and so I wanted to show that to you today. I think that'll be a lot of fun, and the result hopefully uh, will speak for itself in terms of memory footprint and startup time. Let's take a look. All right, let's build a new application. We'll go, as always, to my second favorite place on the internet, start.spring.io. And here we're gonna generate a new application using the latest and greatest. We're gonna call this My Betis Native. Uh, I'll use Java 17 because I can, and it's the future, and I should. I'll use H2, which is an in-memory SQL data store. I'll use MyBetis. I'm going to use Lombok to make short work of some of the stuff that I still need to do because, uh, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, MyBetis doesn't support Java 17 records. Um, it's okay. It's fine, right? I'm happy to have native images. We'll get there eventually. But in the meantime, uh, i got to do that. So MyBetis, Lombok, a SQL database, um, I think I'm, I don't know if I need it, but I'll just bring it, JDBC, just in case, you know, you can never be too sure. Uh, and then of course we want Spring Native, don't we? So Spring Native gives us our ability to create native images. We'll hit generate and we'll open this up in our IDE. Okay, we have a brand new project. Let's make sure that we've got all the dependencies required because again, we have the default my bit is Spring Boot auto configuration, but we don't have the Spring Native support. So there's My bit is the Spring Boot starter. There's Spring Native. There's H2. There's Lumbuck. We need uh, the My bit is Spring Native core. So let's add that here. Okay, so there we are. There's the My bit is Spring Native core. Spring Boot, my beta Spring Boot starter. That should do it. That should be everything we need. Let's go ahead and build a very simple application that uses these new types. So we'll go to source. We'll go to a my beta application, and we're going to build an application that has a simple entity. We'll call that uh, customer. And for some reason, 
this type needs to be public. I don't like it when it has to be public, but here we are. So, okay, good. Actually, we don't need that, actually, if we have that. And we'll have private final integer ID, private final string name, private final string email. All right, good. And we want a, a mapper, right? So we'll create a new type here called customer mapper. And this is going to be an interface at mapper. And we'll have a few methods here to actually handle the data access, right? the things that we're trying to do. So we'll have a method here called void insert customer customer. And another one called customer find by ID long ID. Okay. Now, my bidders won't know what to do with these abstract methods because there's no implementation and the methods don't tell us anything in of themselves. We need to provide some annotations. So, insert into customer name, email, values, name, email, parenthesis, good. Okay, and we want options, we want to use the generated keys, and the key property will be uh, ID, okay? Then we want to do a select. So select ID name email from customer, where ID equals ID. And obviously the parameter here corresponds to the name of the parameter here. These fields, these properties, name and email, are derived from the POJO customer that we pass in. And now finally, we can actually write something that runs when the application starts up. Okay, we're going to create a customer mapper and we will write some data. So for our customer equals new, customer and uh, one and it'll just be josh josh at joshlong.com okay mapper dot insert customer and var result equals mapper dot find by customer dot id and you know let's just prove that it has worked. Okay, result, uh, sorry, customer. And then uh, find result. Okay. All right, I want to run this. The problem is it won't work because it ha it's expecting a SQL schema to be there, and that schema hasn't yet been set up. So let's create a little schema.sql file to have fields for our customer entity, okay? Remember, we have a table called customer, primary key, and two columns called name and email that are of type var car. So we'll go here, source main resources, schema.sql, create table, customer, ID serial, primary key, name var car, 255, not null, Email var car 255 not null. All right, all right. There's our basic application. Let's run it and see what we get. Started the application in you know less than half a second. This is on the JRE, mind you. Uh, inserted a record, got an ID, and then found the record back. So that's working. Great. Okay, good. So I'm able to write data and then find it by its ID and get it back in the same basic uh, shape as I, as I put it in there. Now, let's turn this into a Gravium native image. To do that, we're gonna go to a command line and then uh, use the basic built-in support. So, my base native, maven d to skip the test because that'll double the length of the compilation. p native, clean package. So that's gonna use the maven profile for native, it's gonna Package the application up into first a .jar and then a .native 
than a native uh, application binary. So that's going to use the Gravium native image compiler. It's going to package the application up into first a jar uh, and then to a native image. This process could take a minute or two. So now is a good time to go get some coffee. Actually, there's always a good time to go get coffee. All right, the application is finished. It took a minute and a half to compile. Let's go to the target directory and we'll just run it and see what we get. There we are, there's our application. And that completed in 40 milliseconds. So literally 10 times difference, right? We ran it on the JRE and it ran, it started up in 419 milliseconds or just a little bit more than four tenths of a second. We ran it in a native image and it started up in 0.04 milliseconds. So 040 is how you think of that, right? 40 milliseconds, about 10 times faster. Uh, and the be best part is if it hadn't just blinked into existence and then disappeared, if it, if it had actually had kept a process open, uh, we could have measured its memory footprint, but I'm sure you would have found that it would have been, you know, uh, similarly small, right? Uh, 50 megs of RAM instead of 500 or whatever your typical JRE application uses these days. All right, my friends, that's it. I mean, I just wanted you to see that. The work is amazing. Go check it out. Uh, try your uh, Spring Boot and MyBetis applications out and send feedback to the MyBetis project. This is good stuff. It's exciting, and I can't wait to be able to use this uh, without even having to set anything up. Just you add the Spring Boot starter, and there's native hints uh, for Spring Framework 6 built in out of the box. Pretty cool, huh? Short and sweet. Now bear in mind that this stuff is intended for Spring Native, which is the best way to build Spring Boot 2X and Spring Framework 5X generation uh, applications and get them working in a, in a Gravium native image context. That said, Spring Framework 6 and Spring Boot 3 are just around the corner due to ship sometime later this year in 2022. These new, reversion, new, these new versions, these new revisions are a new generation and they will have built in I hesitate to say native support for building native images uh, using GraalVM. It'll be in the core of Spring Framework and in the Spring Boot uh, build time tooling and uh, integrations, uh, not in Spring Native. So conceptually, I expect that a lot of what we do here in Spring Native will work fairly well in that new context, but I can't say for sure that the types themselves work out of the box. Very likely they won't, right? There might be some package changes or indeed some new concepts or different concepts that appear between now and then. That said, that work should fall to us, the developers of the integrations that you're using in your application, not to you, dear user. If we do our job correctly, you should be able to take your Spring Boot application using MyBetis, change the build to reflect the latest and greatest, and have it just work both on the JRE and in a native image context. It's a very exciting time to be alive, and it's a good time to try your applications now. That integration for MyBetis and Spring Boot is not yet GA, of course, so it would be great to get your feedback, to get your validation, uh, and uh, that'll help shape the way this thing works now with Spring Native and in the future with Spring Framework 6 and Spring Boot 3. As always, my friends, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.